Hey there guys, let's talk about the newest horror film, Barbarian, and I think there's going to be a divide of people with this film. Is it terrifying, or is it terrible? Or is it both? And it can be both and still be entertaining. Now let's talk about it. And by the way, I haven't watched it yet, but which film do you think is more terrifying that came out this weekend? Barbarian, or the new live-action Pinocchio movie starring Tom Hanks? I can't wait to watch that. A young woman discovers the rental home she booked is already occupied by a stranger. What could go wrong? The thing I took away from this film is never book an Airbnb in the Detroit area. First of all, I probably would never do that, but that's the message I got from this film. But the thing I really appreciated about this movie going into it was the trailer for it. Because it's very rare nowadays that trailers don't spoil the movies that they're trying to sell. This trailer was vague, it got me on the edge of my seat, and most importantly, it showcased that there was going to be a dark, creepy-ass basement that goes down into the dark abyss, a void of insanity and terror. I don't know what it is about basements and horror films. They just, ah, oh, they terrify me. You know what, if I close my eyes and I think really hard about it, ever since I was a young boy and I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time at a tender young age of six years old, something about Buffalo Bill in that basement has terrified me ever since. Ugh. Now please forgive me, I'm going to dance around and be sort of vague not to spoil anything about this film because the way that it's laid out, you could easily spoil something, but I will just say this. There are three acts to this film, like many other films, and I will just say each one has a very defined approach and it feels so different. The first act sort of feels like that simplistic, typical thriller suspense horror film that you get from Hollywood nowadays. You have actress Georgina Campbell and she plays this lady looking for an Airbnb to crash at for a night because she's in town for a job interview. And from there, things start to go wrong because once she knocks on the store, she finds out someone's already staying there and that dude is played by Bill Skarsgård, who also played this creepy shit right here. One thing that goes really far with me in movies or horror films especially is I like when characters use common sense, everyday common sense. When you as an audience member watch them and you say, okay, this is what I would do, and the characters actually do that. I like things like that. And the thing I most enjoyed about her character was she seemed like a realistic person. If I was a lady going to a random house in the middle of the night, I would be very cautious. And she does that. She uses her powers of observation to pick up on things. She notices everything this guy is saying does check out. She looks at his reservation on his phone. She can see a suitcase. She can see the bed is messy because he just woke up. She can see a toothbrush on the sink. Everything is checking out. And I like things like that. It's like if you put yourself in that situation, these are the things you would do. But then again, I probably wouldn't book a crappy Airbnb in the middle of some dilapidated part of town and then go knock on the door. I'd probably just drive around and find a hotel rather than stay here. But that's just me. But for the sake of the movie, we'll continue. And real quick, before we take an even further deep dive into madness and we keep walking down into that dark, creepy basement and we talk more about how sadistic and terrifying this movie does get by the third act, I first want to give a quick mention to the sponsor of this video because without sponsors, well, I wouldn't be able to buy caffeinated beverages to make videos. Big thanks to Fan Home for sponsoring this video. Fan Home is a pop culture subscription service that sends you unique collections and build up models from your favorite franchises, movies, TV, and gaming. Fan Home has partnered with Marvel and Marvel Studios, so you can build your very own Iron Man Mark III armor like in the movie, or like I did right here. Each month in the mail, you'll receive a package with a new part of the Mark III armor to put together. And this way, you don't need to be a billionaire philanthropist who builds a suit of armor in a cave. This is so much easier. I am Iron Man. Yeah, check out this awesome light up helmet. Each month you get a new part to put together. And by the end of it, you'll have a limited edition Mark III Iron Man armor figure that's fully posable. It's 24 inches in height with 52 points of articulation with LED lights on the helmet, boots, hands, and reactor. It's made of metal and high quality plastic. Yeah, this right here, this is like really heavy actually. It even has flaps that you can open up on the shoulders and legs just like the real suit. In addition to the parts to build each month, you also get exclusive mini magazines. And they have details and instructions so you know what to do step by step. With the magazine and step by step guide, it makes it pretty easy to put this together. Plus, pictures help. Plus other cool items like shirts, backpacks, posters, and power banks. And Fan Home has other licensed packages as well like Star Wars. So click the link in the description and sign up for Fan Home. I'm holding the Iron Man hand right now. Look at all those points of articulation, like actually look at all that. And use promo code FLICKPICK to get started with a discount. 
This is heavy duty stuff. His foot right here, like it's not light and it even articulates at the foot. And thanks to Fan Home once again for sponsoring this video. So one of the things I really appreciated about this film was I liked that after that first act, it deviated away from that typical Hollywood formula and just went batshit crazy. I can appreciate things like that. And in many ways, it sort of felt like a glorified B-rate horror film from like the 1980s. And it pains me not to say this example because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a 1980s horror film. It would be the greatest example, but it also reminded me of other modern day horror films, something like the movie X or movies like Don't Breathe, because in Don't Breathe, it also takes place in a dilapidated part of Detroit where no one lives within a three mile radius where you can do anything you want to. One pleasant surprise I had with this film was it starred Justin Long. I'm a huge fan of Justin Long. I think he should be in more movies. I listen to his podcast occasionally. Seems like a really nice guy. And I really enjoyed his character in this film. He's a terrible shithead type character who's who's completely unlikable. And as far as Justin Long's character in this film, he plays this actor who's dealing with a Me Too movement, social commentary situation. Either way, I, I did enjoy his character. He's a complete piece of shit, but hey, sometimes watching a piece of shit is fun. And that's why you guys are here right now. Thank you. Barbarian is written and directed by Zach Krager, who's only directed one other film. I think it, this is it right here. I've never watched it. I probably never will, but I'll tell you one movie you should watch of his. It's this. It's Barbarian, because he did a damn good job at directing this film. I liked how it looked visually. It looked very subdued. It didn't look overly stylized or glossy. And speaking of the visuals, there's one sequence in this film that's shot in 4 by 3 aspect ratio with a very, very wide-angle lens. It almost looked like a GoPro. Uh, and I, I'm curious why he shot it with that. I, I sort of enjoyed it. It broke up the, the different scenes and time periods, but I'm just curious why he did that. So if you're watching, Zach, let me know, please. This guy directed one hell of a horror film, and I think he has a bright future ahead of him. I'd like to see more horror films from him in the future. My only big complaint with this film is probably the final 10 minutes that sort of took me out of it. I feel like some of the logic that the movie applied for the first two acts, which I think were the superior parts of this film. Those final 10 minutes, it just tried to push the envelope a little too much and I was no longer buying what it was trying to sell. There's just like one moment that I was like, it was almost unintentionally comical and I was like, maybe they could have done that a little bit differently. Barbarian's only about an hour and 40 minutes long, but it felt like it took its time to breathe, to give the audience time to get on the edge of their seat, to get in those suspenseful situations and get immersed into the environment. It didn't rush anything with stupid jump scares. I mean, yeah, there's a few along the way and I think they were earned and they worked for what they were. Now, here are my final flicking thoughts on the film Barbarian. As far as a fall time horror film goes, something to watch around the Halloween season, this is a pretty good horror film. I can see people enjoying this. I think there's a little bit of something for everyone, but not necessarily it will be for everyone. And what I mean by that is I could see most general audiences enjoying that first act because that's what the trailer sort of gives you. And I think that's where there's going to be a divide. I think the movie is terrifying at times, but I can also see towards the third act, and especially maybe the last 25 minutes of this film, where you go, ah, oh, that's kind of a little bit, I don't want to use the term stupid. I don't want to use the term terrible. I can just say it feels like a good midnight B-rate horror film at times, and there's nothing wrong with that. <sighs> Real quick on a side note, there's one scene where this one character has to suckle on something and there's like a hair dangling from it. <laughs> that probably sounded worse than it is. I promise you it's not what you're thinking. I'm going to give Barbarian this right here. I'd recommend checking it out. It's definitely an entertaining horror film to watch at least once. I don't think the rewatchability is going to be that high on it where I go back and revisit it every Halloween season. And I can't wait to see what the director of this does next. Now here's my question for you and let me know down below. If you've seen the movie Barbarian, what did you think about it? Or what is your favorite horror film that involves a basement? As always guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That way I can see you next time.